What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the PicSwap Media YouTube channel. My name is Sean Bernard, as usual, and I'm excited to announce that for this video, we have partnered with WAP.com, W-H-O-P.com. WAP is an all-in-one marketplace for sports communities and other digital products. If you're looking to find communities on all things sports, sports capping, sports betting, and sports fandom, head to WAP.com sports. They're the all-in-one digital marketplace, the Amazon of the future for digital products. I'm incredibly proud and excited to be partnering, so make sure to go check that out. You can click the link in our description and our comments. Thank you to WAP for sponsoring this video, and thank you to you guys for tuning in. Come on. Down the field, can they do it again? Yes, they can! And the catch is made by Taj Washington. Touchdown, USC! Blocked by Embiid! Timmy, yes! Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Beef Up Front podcast here on PicSwap Media. This show is Ryan Coyle, joined by Joe Kometz for our weekly Thursday episode, um, the college basketball show, college football fully behind us now after that 65-7 to drubbing on Monday night. We won't even get into that, but now our college sports focus is solely on uh, March Madness, and we'll be getting – Get into the nitty gritty. We'll be going through these top 10 games. And then I said last week, we maybe we were going to do a bubble this week. I think next week would be better or we'll be midway through kind of January or approaching the tail end of it. And that's when the bubble talk really starts to kind of heat up because even these first few weeks of conference play, some of these teams with really good non-conference records for playing shitty teams that whole time, then now they're playing in conference play. Now they're, we're really starting to see kind of what team they are. So uh, we'll, we'll get one more week of data under our belts, and then we'll go into our resume game and stuff next week. But uh, another 10 college ba basketball games to break down. Joe, welcome back to the show, as always, and how are we? Uh, I'm fantastic, Beef. I mean, I'm ready to be full into college basketball. I mean, you know, like I'll touch upon it quick. It always sucks when the championship game of any sport, whether it's a Super Bowl, national title game for football, even like the national title game for college basketball or at the NBA Finals, is a blowout because it's kind of like leaves you wanting more, but you know, that is what it is. You know, Georgia is dominant, but um, now we get to fully focus on college basketball. Cause the one thing, even though you, you know, you and I are football guys, I'm a college football guy. Number one, college basketball has the ultimate post season and you truly never know who is going to win. Like Houston's number one in the country right now. I wouldn't be shocked if Houston doesn't win the national play. Like I wouldn't be shocked if any of the teams in the top 10 don't win the national title, because that's just the beauty of college basketball and the beauty of March Madness. And now you're really starting to see, you know, last week it kind of, we were kind of getting into the conference play. Now we're in the nitty gritty. Now every single conference is full go for the rest of the season. So I'm really excited. And we got a ton of great matchups this weekend. Yep. We have games on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for this weekend to break down. So got you covered throughout your entire weekend. Uh, last week's records, not as good as the first few weeks. I went 14 and 16, 5 and 5 on the straight up picks. Joe, you went 17 and 13, uh, 5 and 5 on the straight up picks as well there. So uh, hoping for a little bit better of improvement this week. But as as we've been saying, this is these past few weeks, I feel like have been like our feelers, more so getting to know these teams, seeing who's good, who's not, and who we want to put our, our uh, stake in. But the going forward, we're, we're fully in on this college basketball now. And uh, really just going to be diving into this deep. So without further ado, we'll start it off Friday night, game one of 10 that we'll be breaking down. Number uh, or neither of these teams are ranked, but it's two very good teams that uh, have potential to make some noise come March, I think. And that's Michigan State, who's at 12 and four. They're traveling to Illinois, who's 11 and five. Nine o'clock tip here on FS1. All our projections, as always, via HaslamMetrics.com. The other day when I was on there, it had this score projected as Illinois 68, Michigan State 65. So we'll set the line at Illinois minus 2.5 over under 132.5. A uh, massive game early on in the Big Ten season. I mean, Michigan State is coming off of a seven-game win streak. Uh, they're undefeated, I believe. Or no, excuse me, they have one loss in the Big Ten. But um, – you know, last Saturday we saw them, you know, they had a big home win against Michigan, which even though Michigan is kind of struggling a little bit, you know, it's always big to beat your rival. Um, they won at Wisconsin the other night. Um, now going into this game against Illinois, you know, Illinois last week we talked about them. They were, you know, kind of looking a little shaky. They've won two straight. But looking at Illinois' upcoming schedule, I mean, it's pretty favorable. You have this game at home, then you have at Minnesota who stinks, 
home against Indiana and home against Ohio State before going to Wisconsin on the 28th of January. It's a Saturday game. We'll probably have them on the show in a couple weeks again. But um, I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, Illinois wins all these upcoming games. Uh, I have them winning this game 71-65. I think Brad Underwood, you know, kind of has the guys back on track. You know, getting to play Michigan State at home is also massive. Um, and also it's just one of those things where, you know, kind of picking these games – Neither of these teams is really truly desperate. I'd say Illinois maybe a little bit more than Michigan just because of where they're at. They're in the bottom half of the Big Ten standings right now. I know, obviously, conference season is very young. But um, Michigan State also coming on a seven-game win streak feels like they're kind of due for a loss. Um, they've been playing some of these games, you know, kind of sloppy. Like that Michigan game, I don't know if you watched Coyle, but watched the entire game, and it just was like watching paint dry. Terrible offensive performance. I think that's going to come back to bite them here in Champaign. I like Illinois to win here too. I like them to cover, um, but I'll take the under. I'll go Illinois 68-63. Just uh, some big picture Big Ten talk first. I wouldn't be surprised when we look up at the standings come March that Michigan State isn't the number two team in the Big Ten behind Purdue. Um, I think that they're a team that's getting healthy and they're starting to find their groove. Like you said, Joe Ryan, that seven-game win streak. They've just been getting a lot better over recent weeks. And Malik Hall, when he's in the lineup, I believe they're like 7-1 and one this year. They're a dangerous team when he's there. Um, and you know my feelings when it comes to picking picking teams to win on the road in college basketball, especially in conference play. Very, very hard to do. Um, and now you're getting a game on Friday night. This is probably like the first Friday night game with students most likely back at them as well. This should be a really good and fun environment for a college basketball game. Over their last 10 games before that game on Tuesday night against Nebraska, Illinois was 5-5, five and five, and they had it won uh, either – won two in a row or lost two in a row during that time frame. It was either – it was just a win-loss, win-loss, win-loss type thing. Um, they went on to beat Nebraska, obviously, the other night pretty big, and now they've got two wins in a row. Maybe they can kind of turn the corner and start picking up some momentum. Uh, I think they, they know in this one the importance of protecting their home floor, and they find a way to get it done here. All right, off of Friday now, on to Saturday. Really good slate. Going to be parking my butt on the couch and watching this in the NFL playoffs all day Saturday. We have number t- – uh, not not ranked, but Kentucky at 10-6 and six coming into this one. At number five, Tennessee, who's 14-2. and two. 12 o'clock on ESPN. Uh, projected score here, 73-55 to 55, Tennessee. Tennessee minus 17.5, over under 127.5. Had this game on the schedule before South Carolina – or South Carolina defeated Kentucky the other night, but just thought to keep it on here. I thought it would bring up some good top uh, talking points, even if Kentucky's uh, – not really a very good team right now. Um, I know the, the COVID year Kentucky had a really bad record, but I'm going to throw that out because the COVID year, I don't really count. This, I think, is the worst Kentucky team I've seen since I started paying attention to college basketball. Like, they're just – they're not a scary team. Like, this is the worst team I think Cal has ever had. Like I said, I'm throwing out the COVID year because you can just make the excuse, well, you know, it's COVID. He has no excuse for how just – Terrible this team has looked, frankly. I mean, you lose at home to South Carolina, um, and this is a really soft move by Kentucky. They kicked out that fan. He had a sign, I think, that said, like, please go to Texas. Because there were rumors, you know, that uh, Texas interested in Cal. At that point, when the fans – Kentucky fans are like a cult. They are psychotic about basketball, and they normally would like, see no wrong in the program. When you have the Kentucky fans starting to turn against you, it's, it's done. It's going to be very hard to get these guys up and motivated, especially you're going on the road to a team that, you know, is in the talks of being favorites to win the national title. Uh, shout out Big Cat. This is one of his futures to win the national title, so he probably cursed Tennessee. But in terms of the regular season, I mean, it's going to be tough for Kentucky to go on the road to Knoxville and get a win, especially, you know, like I said last week, uh, Coyle, when we had Kentucky on, Kentucky is like Alabama football. They are the cream of the crop in the SEC. Even when they don't have a good record, you're going to get your best crowd every time you play them. I think Tennessee is just going to smack them. I do think 17 and a half is a bit much. So I'm going to go Tennessee 81, Kentucky 67. Uh, so I'm going to have Kentucky covering that spread and the over of 127 and a half. I just got a feeling it's going to be high scoring, at least from the Tennessee side. I like Tennessee to win two, Joe, 65-58, uh, but, so, but that'll be uh, Kentucky covering that 17-and-a-half and under 127-and-a-half. Um, all I have to say, though, about Kentucky really is, is one word I feel like fits the description, and it's just yikes. I mean, that loss at home versus South Carolina, 
definitely I agree with you, Joe, the low point in this Calipari era. One of their better players, Jacob Toppin, they didn't play that game. Kaysen Wallace, their probably best player this year. Uh, maybe maybe Oscar, he hasn't been that great this year, but those two have been their main guys. Um, he's got a hurt back now, and the fans are calling for Calipari's head. Seems like nothing can go right here, and it feels like a game where I think everyone's just going to hammer Tennessee uh, on the spread and just be like, oh, yeah, they'll easily win by 30. Um, and it's one of those like big public bet games where Kentucky might – actually find a way to just hang around and, and maybe just cover that number. I could easily see Tennessee winning by 30 and blowing them out, as I was just saying, but I'll take them to cover here. I think Oscar is going to have a big game in this one. It seemed like he was just really disappointed with his teammates and their effort and everything last game. I think he comes out in this one and just kind of like a man on a mission and is going to do everything possible to try and win this game. Um, but I think it's just important for t Kentucky to stay competitive in this one. If they lose, they fall to 10 and 7, but you, you're still, you're in the SEC. You have plenty of good opportunities to get big wins going forward. You might be an, a 9 or 10 seed come tournament time in that large or like an 8 or 7 seed, but you, you still have a chance to make it in, and that's all you need at the end of the day. They saw firsthand with that with St. Peter's last year, knocking them off in a 15 2. But if they are able to somewhat keep this game close and competitive, they have three very winnable games coming up against Georgia, Texas AM, and Vanderbilt. You lose this one, you fall to 10 and 7, but you win those next three, you're sitting at 13 and 7, and then you have a huge matchup against Kansas at home. And that's one of those games that really just, I think, you find a way to win those three games in a row and then beat Kansas. I know it's saying a lot, but you're sitting there at 14 and 7 with all the momentum in the world as we're heading towards March. So, uh, a really big stretch, not just for this season, but I think for Calipari's entire like legacy at Kentucky coming up over these next few weeks. But uh, for this game, I still think Tennessee is going to win. But give me Kentucky to cover, keep it pretty close throughout, make it interesting, and, and maybe give them some kind of uh, positive momentum heading into that three-game stretch that I was just talking about. All right, here is maybe my favorite game of the day. I'm really excited to watch this one or at least kind of just track and tune in to see how high these two teams can score. That's number 16, Miami, who's 14-2. and two. At NC State, who's 13-4. and four. 12 o'clock on the ACC network projected score 78, 74 NC state. So we'll go NC state minus three and a half over under 151 and a half. Uh, I'm going to go Miami here. Um, going on the road as uh, the underdog and getting the win uh, 73 to 72. I think it is going to be like to be cliche down to the last possession. It's going to be really close. Um, so I'm taking Miami plus three and a half. I'm taking the under of 151 and a half. The ACC is fascinating right now. I have the standings pulled up here. I mean, it's the upside down, it feels like. you got Clemson, Miami, Pitt, Wake Forest as your top four teams right now. And once again, I know it's early in the conference season. But you have NC State at 13-4 and four overall, sitting there at 3-3. Three and three. I mean, the ACC is really up in the air. It's honestly anybody's conference. I just love this Miami team. I love Isaiah Wong. Um, this it, They're just an exciting basketball team. You know, I tuned in a little bit. I was kicking myself because um, – I didn't bet him against the spread against Boston College the other night. I believe it was last night. Um, winter break has really messed up my days. Like, they're all jumbling together. But um, this could be a fun Miami team. I think Coach Larinaga, I mean, he's been there for a while now. This is a Miami team last year that was, what, Coil, a 10 seed, and they were in the Sweet 16? They made it to the Elite Eight, didn't they? Uh, yeah, they beat they beat Iowa State. I think they were yeah. – were they a 7 seed? And That was a 7-10 I, I don't guess remember. I, I guess yeah, I know they were uh, – lower seed because it was just like weird that one of those teams is going to the elite eight but this is a miami team that you know last season you know coming into this year they had a lot of momentum coming off that tournament appearance and you know that deep tournament run and i think miami is going to be right there i mean when you, you know every team coil you know you tweeted about it the other night with kansas you need that one guy that you can go to late in the game and get you a bucket Miami has that and Isaiah Wong. So even if they don't win this game, Miami is set up for success this season. And I would and I would not be surprised at all if they are a second weekend team. Yeah, I really like Miami as well. They're kind of like a better version of Penn State, who I talked about on Twitter and social media the other day, where they just have a bunch of different guards who can make shots. And, and they're not the biggest team. They, they don't have like the greatest like rebounders, but they just play well and play hard together. And at the end of the day, that's just a, a tough thing to beat. And those are usually the teams I feel like we see make those deep tournament runs. But in this one, I like NC State. They're kind of my sleeper team, I guess we could say, going forward. And wouldn't it surprise me if they found their way to be like that eight or nine seed that upsets 
the overseeded one seed in the first round of the tournament. I like them to win this one 87-84, but that'll take us to Miami plus three and a half over 151 and a half. Uh, really fun, though, game, I think, coming up here, and I do love the over in this one. To Quavion Smith, uh, Jarkel Joyner, Isaiah Wong, Nigel Pack, all playing in this one. There's no shortage of shot makers in this game. This one should be back and forth, just up and down the entire entire time. And it could be, like you said, Joe, one of those games where whoever has the ball last has a chance to win it. Um, I really like NC State, though, and the few times that I've watched them. I've watched them a handful of times this year. But they have that big man, DJ Burns, who looks like he's an offensive guard. He's 6'9", 275 pounds, and he's like out there just giving guys buckets. So just a fun and exciting team to watch. Really electric guards, and then you throw in Burns as well. Would be a big resume boost and win here for an NC State team that started out pretty hot, then they started playing some better competition. Their record kind of uh, slowed down a little bit, but they have an underrated home court advantage. And you find a way here, go to 14 and four uh, midway through January. You're going to have to do a lot of bad things, I think, down the stretch to hurt yourself and your resume. So big win here against against a top 25 team in Miami, in my opinion, for NC State. All right, now we have number 18, Wisconsin, who's 11 and 4 at Indiana, who's 10 and 6. One o'clock on uh, tip off on CBS. Projected score here Indiana 70, Wisconsin 64. Indiana minus 5.5, over under 133.5. I mean, Indiana just off to a rough start in the Big Ten, uh, 1 and 4. A lot of injuries. I mean, it sucks. You know, they've had some key injuries at, you know, key positions. But uh, this is one of those games, Coyler, you and I love to make these picks. Like, this is a put up or shut up game for Indiana. You lose this game at home against a ranked Wisconsin team who is very good, but you know you fall to ten and seven, one and five in the Big Ten is even worse. But ten and seven, kind of like you were just saying, how NC State would have to do a lot of bad to miss the tournament. The margin of error for Indiana becomes razor thin, and you're walking a tightrope the rest of the season. Just like Kentucky. Yeah, true. I mean, Kentucky. You know, you lose that game. The one thing Indiana will always have, though, Indiana is considered a blue blood, and the one thing they'll have, just like Kentucky will have, if they get to the end of the season with a decent record, it'll be like, oh, well, it, it, does Indiana deserve to get in, or does UNC Wilmington deserve to get in? And it's like, well, Indiana's the blue blood, so we're going to put them in. Even though they'll never say that that's what they do, it just always seems like that's the case. We saw it last year with Indiana getting in, you know, making the first four. But – um. I think Indiana's going to win this game 62 59. Uh, Wisconsin plus five and a half, under 133 and a half. And that's just because of, I said it last week when we had Wisconsin on. Um, our guy, Haslam Metrics, who's a big Wisconsin fan, tweeted out, he goes, We are this year's Providence. And the fact that, like, they got off to a hot start, you know, and on the road, Assembly Hall does get rocking. Um, and especially their fans know that this is, they lose this game, they are, they're in for an uphill climb the rest of the way. I just think Indiana is going to make a play at the end of the game, you know, win a tight one. Good old fashioned Big Ten basketball, low scoring, grind it out. Every possession is going to matter. I'm definitely going to tune into this game. It will be a perfect um, kind of like appetizer going into uh, the NFL playoffs. I like Indiana here too, Joe. 67 63. We both like Wisconsin plus five and a half, though, and under 133 and a half. I'd be surprised if the line was actually this big come Saturday. I could see us being more of like Indiana minus one or two. Um, but desperation time. And as you know, Joe, I, lo I love to pick these teams when their back's against the wall um, and they have a chance to win a game here with their back against the wall at home. I love picking those teams, um, especially when especially when you have, uh, I think, something something to prove. As this team is 10-6, and 1-4 and four in the Big Ten, and they were the Big Ten preseason favorite of the year. That made me, like, that was a real head-scratcher for me at the beginning of the year because they were in the first four last year, and they won one game in the first four, I believe, and then they got blown out. Um, they were – that was just confusing to me. I know they returned a lot, but still a team that never had proven anything um, – and there they were kind of being anointed as a team. And there they are, 10 and here they are now, 10 and 6. They have had a few of their guards in Race Thompson and the other guy, the other guy's name is escaping my head right now, but get hurt recently. That certainly has hurt them. Um, it remains to be seen, though, if Wisconsin's best player as well, as well, Tyler Wall, returns from this one. But Indiana desperately needs this game here. Um, just like Kentucky, as we were talking about, they look like they're both in danger of missing the tournament when they both came into the year as top 10 teams. I'm always going to pick, though, home teams with talent and that are desperate for wins in college basketball. So give me the Hoosiers here, but definitely like Wisconsin to cover if the line is that big at five and a half.
All right, now we go on to number 11, Kansas State, the surprise team of the year in a positive fashion in my eyes, at number 17, TCU, coming off a awful loss last night to Texas where they were dominating the first half and they blew it. Uh, but this game's at 2 p.m. I think it's on, like, Big 12 Network or something. The The Big 12 has been terrible this year with, like, putting good games on TV. It's, it's insane. Uh, but projected score, 76-73 TCU. So TCU minus two and a half over under 148 and a half. Good news about this game, Coyle. I have a pull up on my phone here. It does say ESPN two, so it will okay. be on TV, thankfully. But I was gonna be like you and just go nuts. Um, TCU, you know, looking at their record, you know, you might think, oh, you know, this is, you know, if they lose this game, it is what it is. They're sitting at 13 and three, but their upcoming schedule for the rest of, um, really for the rest of January, is a gauntlet. Um, they have this game against Kansas State. Then they have to go to West Virginia and to T- and to Kansas. Also in the uh, Big 12 SEC Challenge, they have to go to Mississippi State, who is off to a pretty good start. I mean, those are four games out of their next five. You know, then they host Oklahoma in between there. So, I mean, these next five games are key for TCU. And you go one and four, two and three, you already have a back-breaking loss to Northwestern State on your schedule on your resume. Which I know, you know, that was the beginning of the year, but when you're looking at resumes, that will factor in for seeding. I think TC won't be in danger necessarily of missing the tournament because the Big 12 is just that stacked this year. I believe Lynn Hardy, um, I saw him tweet out like quickly, like the teams per conference. He had nine Big 12 teams in the field, and Texas Tech was in like the next four out, the only team missing. So, I mean, the Big 12 core, like we say every week, is just stacked. Um, so I have TCU winning the game actually uh, by one point, 79-78. A Kansas State plus the two and a half. I'm taking the over of 148 and a half. Kind of just what I was alluding to, you know, TCU broke my heart last week. Tough two-point loss at home. Then they lose at, uh, you know, by four points at Texas. Back-to-back heartbreaking losses. You know, they got to come home and get one in front of the crowd, especially, I mean, TCU's been having a rough week. You know, lose those two basketball games, the national championship debacle. You need to make TCU fans smile, and I think they're going to get that here because I know Kansas State's off to a great start and they're a great team, but there's something in the back of my mind. I'm just not comfortable picking them yet on the road, even though they proved me wrong last weekend, and they'll probably prove me wrong again. But um, give me the Horned Frogs by one. Big momentum win coming into this next uh, four-game stretch. I'm going to go with K-State, 75-71. So K State plus two and a half under one forty eight and a half. I think this team's legit. Uh, they listen to some stuff throughout the week and, and even watching them a few times myself. They have a legit case that they are that they have the best one two punch right now in college basketball and Noel and Keontae Johnson. Um, and they're just a really fun and exciting group that has been playing just really good team basketball, kind of like NC State I was saying about earlier. Uh, but I think these guys might even be better. And this, I know, picking Kansas State here on the road against a team that could be viewed as desperate kind of goes against my whole logic of pick pick teams at home who are desperate. But I watched that TCU-Texas game last night, and TCU completely dominated that first half, and we saw the type of team that they can be when they're clicking on all cylinders. But they just really blew that one hard and collapsed down the stretch. And it's one of those games where – that's something I think that's just going to sit in these players' minds over the next few days as well as the coaching staff where they know they screwed up, they know they made a mistake, but instead of just moving on and getting ready for a bounce-back type spot here in this game, they let that kind of sit in the back of their head and linger. I think that you could have even viewed that as what happened with Kentucky the other night against South Carolina after they got blown out by Alabama. Instead of just moving on to the next play, the next game, I think this is one of those losses that kind of sits with them. I'm not going to say it derails their entire season, but – they're going to need a kind of a cupcake type game coming up or like a lighter scheduled one where to where it helps them out. And as you were just saying with their schedule, they've got a pretty tough schedule coming up. So they need to figure it out and figure it out quickly. But I like Kansas State to con, excuse me to continue to ride their momentum in this one and take down TCU on the road in an upset here. All right. Uh, Nick McClay's game of the week. Number 14, Iowa State at 13 and two. At number two, Kansas, 15 and one, four o'clock here. It says, it said on my phone at least, I'm not sure if it says it on yours as well, Joe, but ESPN plus this game will be on. Projected score, 70 to 59, Kansas. So Kansas minus 10 and a half over under 128 and a half. 
why is this game on ESPN Plus? Coyle, I don't know. And looking at, you know, here, the games, the other games at 4 o'clock, LSU, Alabama, which we're actually going to talk about next, ESPN. Okay, fine, whatever. Virginia, Florida State. Florida State's 5-12, and 12, ESPN 2. All right, whatever. ESPNU, Cincinnati, 12-6 and 6 at SMU, 6-11. and 11. Why on earth are any of those two games that I just mentioned not – like I get the Big 12 has like their own kind of network and they want to – you know, try to promote it like with this Big 12 package for ESPN Plus, but I don't understand it. I mean, this is a huge game. Three combined losses between these two teams. And Games. there's so many people that just won't be able to even tune into it. Yeah, and I, I get it. It's four o'clock, and like, shouldn't you know if you're ESPN, like you want to com- try to compete to get some viewers from the NFL? I know you're not going to beat the NFL, but you should want to put up programs that are going to put up the best possible viewership. I feel like the number 14 team playing the number two team especially when the number two team is Kansas, I feel like that's going to draw a lot of viewers. That's just me. And there's a reason why I'm currently sitting in my house and I'm not sitting in an executive office. But It also this, could be doesn't like the NFL pregame start and shit like that. That's like this game has the night game. I feel like 4 o'clock, this game going into 6 o'clock, then you do your pregame. That I feel like that would be perfect. But Or even CBS. I feel like they get CBS games, the Big 12, all the time too. Yeah, I mean, who uh, – whatever. Uh, Kansas 77 66. Uh, Kansas, I'll take the minus 10.5 over 128. That was kind of all I'm going to yell about. I think Kansas is a better team. That's all, Coyle. I'll let you do the analysis on the game. I'll go Kansas 70, Nick McClay's Cyclone 60. So Iowa State does cover the 10.5 over 128.5 here. You just can't pick against Kansas and Fog Allen Fieldhouse at the end of the day. Bill Self, I heard the stat the other day. He has 320 wins, and there's there's another number on the end of that. It's 320 something, but only 16 losses as the coach of Kansas at home at Fog Allen Fieldhouse. So he also has 16 Big 12 titles. So he's as likely to win a Big 12 regular season title as he is to lose a home game at Kansas, which is insane. Um, Iowa State though really good again this year. They're going to be near the top of the Big 12 standings all year. A team just like last season, not very talented but still just finding ways to get it done each and every night, it seems like. I think the Cyclones do put up a pretty good fight in this one, find a way to cover, but Kansas at home, you got to take them there. All right, we go to the SEC now. 12-4 and four LSU, who I think is a big phony fraud, at number four Alabama, who's 14-2, and two, 4 o'clock on ESPN. Projected score here, 81-66 Alabama. So we'll set it at Bama minus 14.5 and, and over under 146.5. Coil, I would have to agree with you using uh, the F word there. Um, they are frauds. They're on a three-game skid uh, to Kentucky, AM, and Florida. All teams that are not that great this year. I mean, the, the, I'm saying it like it is. Now you got to go to Bama. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if this is the game you look up at the half and it's like, oh, LSU is either up or, you know, only down a couple points. So this kind of feels like one of those games for Alabama, you know, coming off of wins against Kentucky and Ar- you know at Arkansas, kind of a little bit of a lull. But I could definitely see Alabama coming in here in the second half and just going nuclear like they've been known to do um, under Nate Oates, excuse me. Um, and, I mean, I have not win in this game 86-79, so I have LSU covering – or no, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I have Alabama covering the 14-and-a-half. Um, math wrong in my head, that's on me. But I uh, have Bama covering the spread. I am going to take – the over of 146 and a half as well. I just typed the complete opposite of what I was picking or projecting. Um, so yeah, you have you have Bama 86 79. Yes, that's clearly over. So LSU covers 14 and a half. 86 79. Oh, they. Oh my God. Yeah, you gotta no, get back to class. I do good do it. I've been gone too. I haven't had a class coil in a year. I'm going yeah. back to class on Tuesday for last semester. I mean, it's. I'm good. It's going to be something else. Um, I'll take LSU to cover, but I'm going to take the over of 146 and a half. Oh, my God. All right, Coyle, you go. I like Bama to win 78-64. So LSU covers by that hook there, 14 and a half, uh, and under 146 and a half. LSU, like I said, I think is a fraud team. That 12-4 record does not reflect them. I think they had a very weak non-conference schedule. Here are their wins. 
Uh, Missouri, Miss, University of Missouri, Kansas City, Arkansas State, New Orleans, Illinois State, Akron, Wofford, Texas Arlington, Wake Forest, NC Central, Winthrop, East Tennessee State. One notable win, I guess you could say, over Arkansas. But then, as we were just talking about, on a three-game skid here, uh, they lost a lot to the transfer portal, and their new coach, Matt McMahon, came over from Murray State, and he had to bring a few guys over from him just to fill the roster. Just This is not a very talented group when it comes to SEC-type talent. And that's, uh, I think, evidenced by that is their home loss the other night to Florida, who's not a very good team either. Right in this three-game losing streak, I think it gets to four here on the road. I think Alabama, you could make a pretty good argument, is the best team in the country right now. And I think they might even have the best player in the country in Brandon Miller. At home, you got to roll with the tide. But I do think LSU finds a way to cover by that hook. All right, we go to – this is like one of my more, uh, I guess, games I look forward to, like under the radar-ish. For, for the college basketball season, because I feel like it's always a, a pretty good battle. And this is number 24, Duke, who's 13-4 and four at Clemson, who's at the top of the ACC in basketball, surprisingly, not football, 14-3. and three, 5 o'clock on the ACC network. Projected score here, we have Clemson 68, Duke 67. So we'll give it a line of Clemson minus 1.5 and, and over under 134.5. Fun fact about Clemson for you, Beef. Um, they are an original member of the ACC. They're the only team that has never won the conference tournament. Never won the ACC tournament. They've been in there since the very beginning of the ACC. Wanted to throw that in there. And I think that will continue this year because I have Duke winning this game 84-82. Now, I do know that every year, you know, kind of like what I've been saying about, you know, when the top dog goes on the road, you're going to have the best crowd. I feel like Clemson, though, is on a different level. Kind of like how a couple years ago Kansas would always struggle at Oklahoma State. Kind of feels like that with this Clemson team. But these next two games are going to show me a lot about Clemson. They're hosting Duke, and then they're going uh, during the week to Wake Forest. Um, this is a Clemson team, 14-3, and strong record. But, I mean, lost to Loyola Chicago on the schedule, lost to South Carolina, who isn't that great. I don't know how truly good this team is because the ACC is kind of soft. Um, but that being said, I mean, they're having a tremendous start. And even if they lose this game, they're still sitting at 14-4. and even, you know, in a week ACC, you win seven, eight more games, you're probably in. So um don't really have a lot of analysis on this game. Like I said, I'm still trying to lock in college basketball as much as I can. But um our guy Ryan Patrick Young, I feel like he's going to have a big game for Duke. And uh, he's going to carry the Blue Devils to a win. But I do think this Duke team is fraudulent and can very well get exposed. Like I wouldn't be shocked if Clemson blows Duke out. Because, I mean, Duke looked in trouble against Pitt the other night. I like Clemson to win this one. As I said earlier, this is one of those games I kind of look forward to each and every year when when they do play at Clemson. Because I know with the ACC, it's not exactly the round robin and everyone plays home and away. But Clemson, I feel like it has a good recipe to ups – or it would be, I guess, not technically a betting upset. But if you're Clemson you're beating Duke, people are going to view that as an upset. I like Clemson's – 74 64 so clemson minus one and a half over 134 and a half i think this has a potential to be like that duke versus nc state game that was about 10 10 days ago clemson as we were touching on joe was surprisingly at the top of the acc looking like a viable tournament team as coming into the year brad burnell their their head coach was firmly on the hot seat and now it looks like he saved his job yet again it feels like every year that clemson needs to have like a good bounce back type year he's been able to find a way to do it They'll win this one, if or they do win this one, they'll be ranked for sure. Uh, looking back at the history between these two teams, dating back to 08, 09, Clemson is 4-4 four and four at home against Duke. I know that's not crazy numbers, but still, you have to think more times than not in, the, in that series, Duke's probably like a top-10 team, Clemson probably unranked. Um, this is just one of those games, as you said, Joe, the Super Bowl, it's the game scheduled on all the fans and the students' calendars. It should be buzzing in here Saturday night, a day full of – Students having off and just going out and drinking and getting ready to come to this game, and especially with a chance to remain in first place in the ACC midway through January and vault yourself into the top 25, probably even the top 20 with a win here, would just be huge for the huge for the direction of the program. So really like Clemson here. I wouldn't be surprised if they pull away and win this game by double digits. Saturday night in the Mountain West, our last Saturday game, like to throw at least one kind of mid-major game in each week. And this week's game is New Mexico at 15 and 2 at number 23, San Diego State, who's 13 and 3 and coming into form. Nine o'clock here. Didn't see a TV network listed for this one, but 
We got a projected score of San Diego State uh, 78, New Mexico 70. So San Diego State minus seven and a half and over under 147 and a half. I'm going to go San Diego State 79, New Mexico 75. So I'm going to take New Mexico to cover that seven and a half point spread. I'm going to take the over of 147 and a half. Um, on my four and out coil, it says CBS Sports Network for the uh, TV network. So that'll be a great nightcap. You know, you want to throw it on if you got a second TV or you're at the bar. You'll see that alongside, you know, the NFL playoff games. This could be a great, you know, mid-major game, even though I think there needs to be a term for, like, the conferences in between the mid-major and, like, the power six because the Mountain West is a solid conference. I mean, you're seeing that, you know, these are kind of the top two teams. Um, New Mexico, big win after losing, you know, two straight. Big win against Oral Roberts, um, a game that not a lot of people are really talking about, a game that kind of went under the radar. Um, they scheduled that game last minute, I believe, Massive win against the surging mid-major. You know, Ace Miss is still on that Oral Roberts team from the COVID year in 2020, where if that three at the end of the game was like an inch to the right, I mean, Oral Roberts is a 15 seed in the Elite Eight. You know, we had that back-to-back years with St. Peter's as well. But um, that being said, it's tough because now, you know, you got to go on the road to San Diego State, who has been the big bad wolf in the Mountain West these past couple of years. You know, they're normally towards the top or on top of the conference. Um, give me the Aztecs here. You know, they like to slow it down. You know, they like to play defensive slugfest. I believe they're limiting opponents to under 70 points. Yeah, 65.4 points per game. Um, New Mexico, you know, has a high-powered offense, so I believe they're going to put up at least 70. But I don't think this is going to be a crazy shootout. I am going to take the over 147. But I think that's just going to be because going to be because New, uh, San Diego State is going to be pushed to make a couple more plays late. I like San Diego State to win two, Joe, but I will take New Mexico to cover in the under with a 76-70 New Mexico win. I think New Mexico regressing a little bit to the mean now after that that rocking hot start that they had. Um, I think that they could drop a few games that some people might not be expecting come tournament time um, or as we approach towards the tournament. And I think that they're going to be one of those teams that's in that conversation of like last four buys, last four in, first four out. They're going to be – Somewhere one of those 12 teams, I think. Uh, but uh, looking at San Diego State, this is a team that I think is finding their groove and, and going to start getting that national buzz and attention. They returned a lot from last year, and they had a tough, uh, tough, tough, tough couple breaks in Maui. Um, there are a few bounces going different ways from them being like a 15-1 and one team right now. But now conference play, as you said, Joe, the big bad wolf on the block. They're the best team in this conference, and they should only lose, I think, four or five like total games throughout the rest of uh, – like when we look at their their record going into the conference tournament, there should only be like four or five losses probably next to next to their number. So this is a, a team that I think will finish the year probably in the top 15, top 10-ish uh, as we head into March. Matt Bradley, if you're able to watch this one, a very good, like crafty, just old school type type basketball player, a really fun guard to watch. So I, I do like San Diego State to win this one, but I do think New Mexico can can keep it close and cover. So we go 76, 70, New Mexico plus 70, plus seven and a half and under 147 and a half. And Sunday, maybe the game of the weekend, and it sucks that this is on Sunday at noon. I wish this game was on Saturday at noon, uh, but this one, it should be. Another game like Miami and NC State where the scoreboard might be erupting after this one. Number 25, Marquette, another one of the probably top five surprise teams of the year. At number 12, Xavier, 12 o'clock here on Fox. Projected score 83 to 79, Xavier. So we'll set it at Xavier minus three and a half, over under 161 and a half. So I have Xavier winning this game, 79-73. I'm going to have him covering the minus three and a half, and I'm going to take the under of 161 and a half. Very simple stat here. I saw it earlier today um, on UConn Twitter because UConn, you know, has lost three of their last four. Um, the top five teams currently in the Big East, Providence, Xavier, Marquette, UConn, Creighton. When they have played each other, the road team is winless. The home team is undefeated. I think that trend will continue. I mean, we saw UConn's already played three road games at Providence. Xavier, Marquette has lost all three. Um and I think that's going to continue here. I mean, Marquette also coming off a big emotional win, beating uh, now having to go to Xavier. You know, it's tough to, you know, with these college kids, you know, at times to keep the emotions in check. Sean Miller going to Xavier has been awesome. Xavier is immediately, you know, at this time of year is normally when they started to fade and would end up missing the tournament at the end of the year. 
um, that's I don't think that's going to happen at all. I think Xavier is going to be in position to be battling for a top three seed in the NCAA tournament, maybe even a one seed if things keep going the way they're going. Um, Xavier looks like the best team in the Big East right now, and I think they're going to show that against Marquette on Sunday. I like Xavier too, 84 to 80. So Xavier minus three and a half over 161 and a half. If I have like a betting tip, I think for this weekend, so it probably won't hit, but parlay this over with the NC State Miami over. I think these these two games are going to be really fun and exciting back and forth, up and down high scoring battles. Um, very well could be the best game this year in the Big East. Two teams who love to get up and down, put the ball in the hoop. Both teams are combining to average 187 points per game, and both are top 13 in the nation in points per game. So two teams who can really score the ball. Both of these coaches have done tremendous jobs this year, and I think Xavier is a legit Final Four threat, while Marquette could be like a Sweet 16 team. And But you're looking at Xavier. They're riding a 10-game win streak right now. They shoot 40.9% from three, which is third best in the nation, and they're averaging 21.1 assists per game, which is the best in the nation. Just a really solid, or excuse me, not even solid, really elite offensive squad. Um, juggernaut, I guess it would be even a better word to describe them. This game could very well break the scoreboard in my eyes. I like Xavier's win streak to reach 11 in this one, but we get a really good battle here. And then, as I said, parlay that this over with – the over in NC State, Miami, I think that that is probably my uh, play of the week, I guess we could say. But that'll do it. Another episode down here for the Beef Up Front podcast, the college basketball show. Ten games that we broke down, but there's so many more as well that I'm sure you'll be able to tune into alongside the NFL playoffs. So thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Any last-second comments, Joe? Let's get into another great week. I mean, we're starting to get to – you know, the end of football season with the playoffs starting pretty soon, we're going to be full-blown bracketology. I mean, beef has it covered for everything. NFL, college basketball, we got it all. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening, for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and we'll talk next week.